Hey, Somerville, Janet Cormier here, Arted Scat, with still another fabulous artist from Somerville. We have the amazing Alexandra Rosen, did I say it right, man? Yes. And she has the zen in her name because she is the zen person, the zen <laughs> artist. Don't let that laughter fool you. She is serious. No, that part I'm kidding about. But she creates wonderful art, has a beautiful palette that she uses, and an amazing artist. So welcome to the show, Brave Thank Soul. Thank you. Thank it's you. so nice to have you It's my you pleasure. Here. Thank you very much. And tell us about your medium and where you, how you started in painting. My medium, the medium in this show is oil and canvas. Uh, I have two, that's upside down. Oh, oh maybe not. No, this was, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, not this way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. um, so my, the medium on those paintings that I'm showing today is all oil and canvas. Um, I guess the important part of my painting, painter's story is how long ago I started painting. Mm -hmm. I was born in the Soviet Union and in the Soviet Union people are very serious with their children. So I started painting when I was as little as five years old. And uh, my wonderful parents decided that I am a genius, so they really supported my painting beginnings through my whole life. So in comparison to the most of my friends who went to music school, I actually went to art school. You know, right now, thousands of kids want to move to Russia. No. They, well, they, they're thinking, though, if parents say that, they want to move there. Oh, no. I know a lot of parents who are trying to do everything to move their children out of Russia. Okay. But that, that was uh, like, but when you said that, I was like, wow. <laughs> her supportive parents, but very good. Yeah. Um, and so what medium did you start with? How did you? Well, of course, I started on paper with watercolors and pencils, and we had no markers. That's too fancy. And uh, paper was in shortage sometimes, so I painted on uh, the back of the wallpaper. Uh, and uh, my, we saved this work, and some of it turned kind of yellow because of the wallpaper paper. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, we saved a lot of my uh, childhood work and uh, one of the constant jokes, or maybe not even jokes, is that my work actually hasn't changed much since. It, 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 has, <laughs> it has a lot of connections to my childhood dreamy work and, and fairy tales that I like to tell in my work. It went through many phases, mm -hmm. but I think that my work, if anything right now, is honest. And uh, I tell stories in my work, they are extremely personal, maybe way too personal, but I guess I feel that if I tell it, you know, I just as well be honest and just be myself. Um, I am funny and I like being funny uh, in my work, but I think my humor is very sarcastic and, and I guess I can say that it's Russian. So there is, there is a lot of absurd in my work. Absurdity. Absurdity in my work. and. Uh, absurdity has been one of my main mediums through my life, I guess. Um, I, I like putting things, putting images in absurd situations and, um, you know, making, putting palm trees into Siberia and things, things like this. Where they should be. Misfitting things a be. lot. Um, question for you. Mm -hmm. Were your parents artists? Uh, my father... Could have been and should have been an artist. He's an amazing drawer and amazing painter, but he stopped painting at some point and he's a very serious, wonderful, successful person. Okay. Uh, but he definitely is one of my main influences, if I have any. Uh, he is somebody who actually taught me to be persistent and to work. And I'm very thankful of that. Because and your, your mother, was she a painter? Were there any? No, other? my mother was not a painter. She was just a very good mother. That's amazing. Still is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, but it's so great that they encouraged you. Yeah. Because you don't find a lot of parents that do encourage. Yeah, that's why I say that. And in schools, they don't encourage. No. One of my ongoing jokes is that uh, I hate them with that kids use crayons mm -hmm. because you can't take crayon back. Once okay. it's on paper. Uh -huh. So some kid is drawing, uh -huh. and, and the teacher goes by and says, nice tree. And the kid says, that's my dad. 
and then the kid stops <laughs> painting and drawing forever. Mm -hmm. So um, I applaud your parents. Mm -hmm. Thank you, parents, because you allow her to be here today to be this artist. So uh, tell us about this painting. Well, this painting is obviously about myself. Uh, probably people don't need to know those things about me, but I hope it's funny. Um, but they think this painting tells us a story about discomfort, uh, about me being a total misfit into, I think, the society, wherever I go. Uh, that's how I feel. I can't really find kind of a group of people to belong to. I don't know if I need one. I don't know if I should have one. But this has been my theme, my topic, and in many ways my whole life. Um, so this, this painting is, there is this creature on this painting which a little bit looks like me, um, the, at least the face. <laughs> I hope I don't have the feathers, but maybe I do. Uh, and uh, so there is a landscape behind the curtain. There is a lot of curtains in my work. I like the idea of theater, stage, open windows, closed windows, and showers. All those things interest me, so they all come with curtains, and curtains play a very important part in my work for many years now. Uh, so there is a curtain in this painting, there is a landscape with a blue moon, and I guess myself trying to find the balance to sit on the moon or maybe jump down back to, to Earth, but I am obviously not sure. Well, this is a struggle, though, that we all have. Find yeah, a home. I, yeah, it's it's do. very difficult. Yeah. To What's find the that name person? of this painting? It should oh, have it. Actually, you have it here. It's backwards. Balance. Okay, it's called balance. Yeah. So you see, um, I guess I'm trying to find the balance. So, and it's, that's yeah. something you know you'll be exhibiting in July, uh -huh. and people are welcome to come in uh -huh. and see your work uh -huh. and understand. You will find a lot of messages here. Uh -huh. This one is called Blue Tea. Yeah. Blue tea. Now, has your palette changed over the years, or do you? My palette goes through phases, and mm -hmm. actually, this work, and I only noticed it today, is so blue and so green. <laughs> they, uh, at least those five pieces that I brought, they, they are, they almost can be one piece if I arrange them together somehow. Um, but my, my work comes beautiful. in different palettes, and uh, actually, I have been working on a very specific. A large series of paintings for the last three years, which I will not have in this show, but people can see it on the internet. And it's about art history and myself, where I put myself inside famous paintings. Oh. And I tell, um, I have enough guts to move in with famous, famous artists like Matisse or Chagall, and the paintings are called Moving In with Matisse or living with Chagall and doing all those different things to them, or hunting with Bruegel, with his hunters in the snow. Um, so there is some skepticism in this idea, but uh, I'm very happy with this series and how it has been unfolding. Um, and I'm sure I'll never, I'll keep going it through my life. Uh, it's also a wonderful way of working to kind of uh, show myself what is really happening with me, I guess. Uh, but those pieces that will be in the show that's coming up um, are um, very much about air. I think the blue and green are about air and, they, of course, about landscape and about place and misplacement. So if there is a place, there can be a misplacement. <laughs> and again, it's, it's a sort of identity, finding home yeah, at so, the same time. Yeah, so that's definitely, can, it, this painting you're holding can very easily be analyzed that way. You know, we can even say that, you know, we all know Russians like tea, you know. I didn't and, know that, but that's good to know. <laughs> and, uh, um, there is a black tea and there is a green tea and there is an herbal tea, uh, but this is blue tea which I don't think exists. So after the show there may be some blue tea. Yeah. Someone maybe. might you might have inspired someone okay. to do and I okay. you cut her in. Maybe on 10%. I will serve it at my opening. Uh oh. So. <laughs> there. I'll bring a samovar and I'll put blue tea in it. Well make now sure. this piece. This piece do you need that it's called nostalgia? Nostalgic herbs. Yeah, talking about blue tea. <laughs> it's similar, I think. 
Well, I think the idea of this particular piece is, is just um, a b beautiful place. Something that is far away from us because it is unreachable. There is something about it that makes it difficult to get to. Um, it can be a memory, it can be hope, it can be love, I guess, maybe. Um, and uh, the yeah. detail, it's very delicate the way you use the white and you limit your palette. Uh -huh. It's very rich. I love down here. And then are these ropes? Yeah, or images? I have a lot of strings and the ropes in my work as well as curtains and that's connected. Um, and then in the background, this, lands, this is landscape yeah. with the purple, you've used the blue. Yeah whitened it so that it's it's this wonderful like storm-like quality yeah it's beautiful and then uh, when you come to the show you have to see because you you have to again I always tell people when they come to the show and see the art uh -huh. they have to come up close and then walk away uh -huh. and squint uh -huh. because the way the artist uses the color the richness and then here it sort of has a watery uh, the way it's dripping uh -huh. you don't usually see well I guess in oil you can see that I usually work yeah. in acrylic uh -huh. Um, but quite beautiful. Thank you. It, it looks like fabric. It looks like it was delicately sewn <laughs> flowers. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Well, now. The next two pieces are somewhat spooky. I'm just warning everybody. <laughs> oh, that's good. We have an artist who gives you a warning ahead of time. <laughs> uh, uh, so things are happening in, in this painting and then the next one. It's called Holding. It's called holding. Okay. Um, and I think it's ho called holding because the painting that was holding is the one that we can't really see. It's behind the one that's painted over it. I think there are parts of holding. I think that the bird was holding something. And I think the bird lost it and it drowned and the, this head came out of the water. And the bird maybe is trying to hold it, but I don't think the bird can really handle this kind of weight. Um, the bird is exquisite. Thank you. Well, this bird has been in my work for many years. Absolutely exquisite. Thank the you. The eye, the delicate nature of the um, wings, mm -hmm. and then the nice application of green. Mm -hmm. And your image here of the person, this reminds me of you. <laughs> this face reminds but you don't have green hair. But No, but that, is, I can fix that for the opening. OK, all right. And then it's just like, it's, I just love, and then you added this surreal red. Mm -hmm. And that's, is that a bucket or a little? It's a hole? bucket. It's a bucket. Yeah, I do have a lot of buckets. It's one of my symbol images that has been traveling through my work through years. And uh, I have a bunch of pieces where things like days, nights, years, two hours are inside buckets. So buckets is a measuring tool for me. You can put something that you can measure in a bucket as if it is a cup. Uh, and I think one other reason I like buckets is because you can put them on strings. Yes. Um, it, it, there's a sort of Asian quality I find in uh -huh. your flowers over here with uh -huh. the perfect, they look like perfect circles from here. Uh -huh. And the way that you're able to capture the light uh -huh. Um, Thank you. It's, it, it's an amazing, when you see the painting, again, it's incredible because there's light and the way that it's developed. So you have two little dots of, of yellow here, mm -hmm. but not quite the same intensity here. Right. And then some white. So your eye just sort of, you help our eye flow through. Yes. And again, there's so many layers of the paint. It's really seductive. and. It draws you in. And the little, are these little butterflies yeah. or flies? Yeah. They're incredible. <laughs> Thanks. The bird, I, I think I can hear it singing. Okay, so some people might think that's weird, but you can hear it. It's just a beautiful, and right up here too, the blue moon. Um, if that is a blue moon, the it image, is. It, is. it is so beautiful. It, um, it's, a, it's overwhelming because with such a delicate palette, some people feel intimidated. They'll use a lot of colors. Mm -hmm. But with you, you're very confident and you manage to get all the different 
tones out of a color. Mm -hmm. You really do. Yeah, this work is specifically kept in this limited palette. I've been, I enjoyed it very much. It's, it's like a separate assignment. Um, and it's something that artists do. They may decide certain, maybe certain materials. Mm -hmm. They'll cover um, a certain size. They might all do a certain size. Mm -hmm. um, and if you could help me put this here. Again, very mythical, but fun. It, it's serious, but then it makes you sort of smile. Yeah. Well, that's sort of where I am. Yeah, I, I, I think this is definitely about to people and about their conversation between each other, but then you notice that they lost their bodies and there isn't much left of either one of them. And that's what should probably unite them together. So even if they are disagreeing with each other, I think they're probably best friends by now. Or it went up in smoke. Yeah. I, I have a, a tiny little painting that's called Smoke uh, that is in a private collection right now. and. Uh, I missed it so much after I sold it that I thought I'll try another version of it. And it's actually very close, except that the original smoke one is really tiny piece and it's mm -hmm. important how private it is, how personal it is. Mm -hmm. So this one is bigger and it, it's very different because it got this curtain and sort of another world or another possibility for these two creatures or their bodies. Maybe we can find the bodies behind the curtain, maybe not. Um, and this is a radiator? It's a radiator. I yeah. like it that it's grounded in something very practical. Radiator is one of the images that has been repetitive in my work. And it started as something that brings temperature yes. and changes temperature. I really like that. And I thought, you know, people always think about sun and, and uh, good weather and um, so maybe boiling teapots, you know, um, when we talk about temperature, but old radiators, as well as, I guess, new radiators, <laughs> also change the temperature. And I find it very sophisticated. There's <laughs> so. a place around here that, that has radiators, all the radiators you could ever want to see down the street. I on know. The other yeah, side. yeah, I saw it. I've yeah. seen so many people with cameras go in and take mm -hmm. pictures. Mm -hmm. Now, how long does it take you? Well, you know, this particular series actually took me a very long time because I started it about a year ago. I had a pretty challenging time in my life. I was kind of trying to run away from myself. And it was exactly about a year ago when I just took off to Maine. And if you got to lose yourself, Maine is a good place. And, <laughs> and rented a little place there which has a tiny little kitchen with one burner and a meditation room and a garden and, uh, and a studio. And kind of spoiled myself for a few weeks this, this way and uh, started the series of this series there with, I believe, maybe 10 canvases, all the same size in this specific palette. And then I kept moving through the year and I kept changing this work. So finally, I landed in Somerville not that long ago, only in October. And I have a studio on Joy Street, and I love my Somerville studio. And this is when I finished this work. Now, you also have a school? Yes, I have a school. And you have, it seems like your students seem like they're having fun. Yeah, so I am very glad that my school is called Art School 99. You can find more about it on... on um, internet. My website is artschool99summerville.com. And um, right now I teach there by myself only. Uh, but I teach in, in a very special way, somewhat different from the most of the people, I think. And I do have students who are very committed and uh, have been with me since I opened. Now you have a husband wife team, do you? Or? No. no, I thought there was. I saw a couple. Mm -mm. I didn't know if they were. Okay, so I just started nope. a scandal. No. Okay, <laughs> so that did, that's not happening there. Okay, no. but nope. um, I saw that you do have a school, uh -huh. and it is in Somerville. Yeah. And so that's something that, you right know. Right here on Joy Street. See? 86 Joy Street, there second floor. And it's a, I mean, you have an understanding, a uh, very compassionate and passionate teacher in Alexandra, Thank and you. I think you would really enjoy it. Um, we just have a little bit of time left. 
oh, we have more time, then time grows. I like that. So um, tell me more about how you developed as an artist. With who, what, what other influences? Were there influences from, from your country or yeah. when you moved? Well, my way has been very, um, it, it, I moved many times and from different cultures to other cultures and uh, changed my teachers and changed the way I learned and changed the way I studied and changed the way I produced work. Um, and I think it's very important. So I grew up in Moscow. I spent my whole childhood in Moscow and I immigrated to America when, when I was already 18. Uh, but as I said before, I started painting when I was five. So from the age of, t from five to 18, I was in different schools in the Soviet Union. That's kind of the whole long story, um, how I left one school and then had a private teacher and, and then left him and then decided to become a theater designer and then... Oh, see, she was going to leave that as a secret that she was a theater designer. I wasn't. I just dreamed to be one. Well, that's I'm close sure. enough because it shows up in your paintings because yes. there's, there's a lot of yeah. drama it in it. It has a lot to do with that. Um, and actually, since then, I worked with, in, uh, with um, uh, performance artists and with people who do music on the stage and different things. And I'm still in search there, but I'm pretty sure that soon I will have bigger projects in that area. So now I've noticed in other, <clears throat> excuse me, artwork that I've seen from other artists mm -hmm. from Russia, mm -hmm. that there is a lot of floating people <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. and images like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always been impressed with it, like dreamlike quality mm -hmm. that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it came to me, too, as I'm looking at these two heads here, mm -hmm. that, that quality. And it's something that I've mm -hmm. just noted. I've not seen a lot, I mean, mm -hmm. but I've looked through books mm -hmm. of Russian art, mm -hmm. and I've just noticed. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Well, I guess Chagall is the one who's mostly known for his flying uh, people. And uh, he, as he himself explained it, is that it is about uh, moving um, from one place to another. And... It's also about love, how you um, give yourself to another person. You kind of, if you go up, uh, you, it's, you move faster mm -hmm. than if you have to walk. Oh. Um, I don't know if anybody read Chagall's autobiography, which he wrote when he was actually only 21. This first sentence in this book is, is I was born dead. So he's, the whole analysis of life, death, and art in the book has a lot to do with being above everything. Uh, I think my, my, in my work, I got those characters when I found out that we are immigrating. So things got up kind of above the surface mm -hmm. and they got stuck in the air because they had no idea where, <laughs> where they're really going. I think I, now it's, I feel very comfortable in this air, but this is how it started in my case. And I, I, you know, I've only moved from state to state, uh -huh. and then within the towns. Uh -huh. So, and I get very caught up. It takes me forever. I have to hire the biggest truck in the world, the Noah's Ark it's truck. It's difficult, yeah. And um, so, I can only imagine coming from a different country, how massive that is. Well, not not in a way because you really got rid of everything. Okay, well, that's the part that would kill me because <laughs> just, I'm a pack rat. That's I am, it. Okay, I said it on air. I am a pack rat. I like to describe myself actually as a stuffedist. Mm -hmm. I like stuff, mm -hmm. and it grounds me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I am amazed when people are able to take that and sort out and 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 move on. That that to me is a real gift. <laughs> And um, your work is just um, empowering, and it has irony. You were talking about your sense of humor. Mm -hmm. uh, quickly, do you have a, a couple of words of inspiration for anyone that's out there looking to do any painting or? Inspiration, I actually believe that you just have to go do it. If you really want to do it, just go do it. It's, it's work. Mm -hmm. It's hard. And uh, I think it makes the world a better place 
uh, if you do it beautifully, if you do it interestingly, if you do it intelligently, if you send messages to people that they should hear and maybe are lazy, too lazy to read about them or write them down. Maybe if you show them in pictures, they see them better. Um, I think that just work and come to my school. I'll explain it better to you. Okay, and come to the reception. We're going to set the date. Come to my reception. And um, you need to come down here and meet the artist. She's fabulous. Thank you. We shop in the same place when we can, as you can tell. <laughs> um, also, um, her generosity in explaining uh, some personal uh, information about the painting. And that's what art is about. It's mm -hmm. sharing, it's a very, creating art is very vulnerable. Yes. You know, you really put Too yourself much. out there. Yeah. And then you have people that will come in and take looks and mm -hmm. say things that could be cruel mm -hmm. um, because they don't get it. Mm -hmm. So artists are brave. Artists um, can be very strong. Have to be. But we are people, so there are, we have our strengths and our weaknesses. But when you come in to SCAT and you see at the art at the gallery here, you're going to see, always see a diverse range of artists who I feel express, who put their hearts out there and their feelings out there. And that's, and you know, Community Access TV, that's what it's about too. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, tonight you didn't see her, but we have Zoe in the background. <laughs> now she's all embarrassed. And Why she's, she embarrassed? She's, she's, she's helping us with the technical piece of this. Jason offered to help. Zoe um, stepped in. So I thank you. Zoe looks very cool, too, in her outfit. She's just, you didn't see it, but she just did this with her hair. Um, so, and she's laughing a lot. And then she is, now she stopped laughing. And then Alexandra, you see, style. Love the Hi. skirt. Um, Thank you. <laughs> and um, I so enjoyed having you today in our studio. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, let's see. I, we still got a couple of minutes. Good. So any other little, any more tips? You got two minutes to, to say something. <sighs> two minutes. Um, well, let's see. Um, hmm. She's saying it. You just didn't hear it. <laughs> the words came out. They were bouncing off of me. Um, you, starting at five, age five is, is a, I applaud your parents. Thank you. Um, Thank I you. was drawing at five, but I didn't get that kind of response. Thank you. So that's why I said lots of people are going to go to Russia now and say, yes, we'll draw, we'll draw. Oh, well, let's see. What is it they're going to draw if they go there? Yes. Um, well, I guess the last thing I'll say, I will remind people to check my school website. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope to, to meet them and uh, see how interesting it is what we, what we do in school. And we have a special programs that maybe make some people get very vulnerable. And so there are better, I think. So that's great. So you, and you're going to be in a comfortable situation. Mm -hmm. That's the best place to be vulnerable, where you can express yourself. Yeah. You don't have to be, but oh, you don't enough. have to be. There's no demand. There's <laughs> no. no demand. It's not Never. like therapy. You no. Have to. Uh, and I thank you again because we. This is a great show. Great, great guest. Wonderful backup team. <laughs> The plants are even here, and they're giving us oxygen, which is a good thing. So I thank you. Month of July, it is Alexandra's work that will be here. And uh, you got to check out the show. Tell your friends. Whoever is watching, let us know. We like to know that you're watching. You know, you shouldn't be watching certain political things. They will excite <laughs> you in the wrong way. But this, this will calm you down and make you think. So until... Uh, the next show, I always end with assalamu alaikum, which means peace be to you. Mm -hmm. And take care of yourself and take mm -hmm. care of the people around you. Mm -hmm. So I thank you. And uh, a round of applause for everyone. Yay! Thank you. The clapping you didn't hear was Zoe. Yay! <laughs>